Hi, I'm Matt Redmond and today we're going to be talking about slug pellet application and best practice. Before applying slug pellets then we need to work out if there's actually any slugs there to treat. So there's a number of different ways of doing it from knowing your field history, so was it oilseed rape last year which would have a higher slug pressure uh, or was it cereals. Um, volunteers, look around the field, volunteers from previous crop, have they been already attacked by slugs uh, and then obviously this field has been drilled so volunteers hopefully aren't there so we use baiting points they want to be 25 centimeters sort of a dark object source or, or something with some layers mash or wheat based food under it we should have nine of those across a field in a w shape if the field's over 20 hectares and put 13 out and underneath each one we want to find thresholds so if, if it's a cereal if there's four slugs then we need to treat whereas oilseed rape and potatoes and things it be, would be one slug Some of the most overlooked issues of, for responsible pelleting are, are the simple things, such as filling in the field so that if any spillages and that occur, we li limit risk to waterways. Cleaning machinery off before we leave the field so that we don't take them out onto the road and risk dropping them again. And then also PPE so that we don't take pellets home with us. There's only two choices of slug pellets available on, on the market now, metaldehyde and ferric phosphate, both of which have got completely different modes of action. Metaldehyde is de dehydrates slugs, leaves, leaving visible slime trails and dead slugs on the surface, whereas ferric phosphate is stomach acting, create, meaning they, they stop feeding and go underground and die where we can't find them. Precision pelleting, uh, what does it mean? It, it could be machinery used to apply the pellets right down to product choice and uh, when we apply it. So for machinery choice we've got two options really, we've got a pneumatic boom spreader such as this one which means that we're applying across the length of the boom with smaller outlets so we're not trying to throw a pellet 12 metres. It also means that over 24 metres we've got four sections of 6 metres so when we're doing the outside of a field we can use our watercourse buffer of 6 metres, we can just switch a section off and go round and carry on applying missing that section. Uh, down to product choice it also means that so for the centre of the field we could apply metaldehyde where we know we're at good 24 metres, 30 metres away from a watercourse, keeping it where we need it, using ferric phosphate on the headlands so that we've got, still got uh, slug control. In terms of actually timing of application before weather issues with re heavy rain or drains flowing, we use ferric phosphate over metaldehyde again to reduce the risk to watercourses. So when applying slug pellets there's a few common mistakes. Uh, the first would be poorly calibrated machinery. Um, is, it slug, is it tray tested? Do we know how wide it spreads? So for example a spinning disc machine that in theory spreads to 12 metres will probably throw the odd pellet 15-18 metres. So we need to allow this when we're doing headland runs. The other thing is that a spinning disc machine will also throw pellets backwards so when switching on and off coming up to headlands are we allowing enough time to make sure we're not throwing them into the hedge. We also need to make sure that going f when actually applying in the field, we apply to the middle of the field first and do the headlands last so that we're always running on clean ground and not picking pellets up to con contaminate the machine. When it comes to spreading on field boundaries, it, it's important to know what product you're using and the different buffer zones required. For example, metaldehyde requires a 6 metre buffer zone next to a watercourse, whereas ferric phosphate is zero buffer zone. So where we are standing now we've got a six metre grass margin so we could apply up to the edge of that with metaldehyde but because we have a ditch on the left hand side of us here it would be better to use ferric phosphate for the headland of the field. Um, the other options are obviously we've talked about spreading width and things with the spinning disc machine and varying pellets distances whereas if we're using a pneumatic boom spreader we can fit deflector plates to the end nozzles or switch six metres off as we go around the outside so that we know we're a lot more accurate with where we're applying those pellets. And the most important thing to remember with slug pellets is to treat them like any other pesticide. 